the Edison Company, the Thomson Houston Company, they all got together and formed General Electric Company, 1892. And one of the first things they did, of course, was put in a bid for the job at the fair. Their bid was roughly a million dollars. The Westinghouse bid was about half a million dollars, and naturally, Westinghouse got the job. In retaliation, GE refused to sell Westinghouse any of their Edison light bulbs. And they got some judge to say that uh, Westinghouse couldn't use any one-piece lamps of any description at the fair. Westinghouse frantically devised a two-piece stopper lamp by fair time and saved the day. Now Tesla had a chance to make history in Chicago. His large AC generators would supply all of the fair's electricity and prove that his system would work on a large scale. On May 1, 1893, 100,000 eager spectators filed into the fairgrounds, awed by the gleaming neoclassical architecture. Night fell. President Grover Cleveland pressed a button, and the fairgrounds exploded with brilliant tube lighting and multicolored searchlights. The most incredible display of lighting the world had ever seen. In the Great Hall of Electricity, the public could see that the Tesla Westinghouse system made it all possible. To overcome the impression that AC was dangerous, Tesla put on remarkable demonstrations. He created a device called the Egg of Columbus to show the rotating magnetic field created by his AC motor. In his room, he had cork soled shoes on and a tuxedo and white tie and a top hat. And he would put his hand on a terminal, which would flash electricity through his body, creating a great shower as his whole body was, was encompassed in flame. And uh, people were quite impressed by this, uh, to say the least. The Chicago Exposition left an indelible impression on the American imagination. This was the gleaming new city of the future. And it was powered by the inventions of Nikola Tesla. Since childhood, Tesla had dreamed of harnessing the power of the great natural wonder called Niagara Falls. The famous British physicist, Lord Kelvin, was now head of an international commission to find a way to use the falls' power. He had sent a cable to all the other members of his commission, and it said, trust you avoid the gigantic mistake of alternating current. But all this dramatically changed when Lord Kelvin attended the Chicago Exposition and saw the AC system in operation. A contract was immediately awarded to Westinghouse Electric to power the mighty cataract with AC. The technical challenge was daunting. The Niagara plan called for three 5,000 horsepower alternators, the largest generators ever made. Tesla and Westinghouse engineers had heated disagreements about the operating frequency. Even when the system was finally installed, Tesla was the only person who was certain it would operate. The 